whenever I see you and we shake hands, you kind of pull me into you naturally. Every time. Yeah. I let you know where we're at. Yeah. But if I take I, my I take my big fucking meaty paw and I pull you in close and I and I fucking I smell that expensive ass cologne on you. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, I'm like, how you doing? I give you the lawnmower. How you doing? I yeah. give you one of those. Yeah. Come on. Like that. I give you one of those. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what do you always do? You do <laughs> Yeah. I make that noise. <laughs> Just like that every time. Hi. <laughs> Bingo. My name is Stretch. This is the last time you mess with Stretch. Ah! Ah! And fade. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to probably the first episode of the Stretch and Fade podcast. Um, this show, you're in for a lot. Now, if you're listening from TMG, obviously, you know me as the co-host of TMG. If you mm. know Hunter, you know him as... Then you're an overweight white man. Yeah, and you know him yeah. as a revolutionary animator. But what you don't know is Hunter has been dying, absolutely dying, to start a podcast um, based on politics, mm. the red pill, really as getting long, it. As long as it does not divulge into F1. <laughs> Let me tell you something, though. I'll, could you have picked... A more like Here we go. <laughs> unsympathetic Here we go. hobby to like for America. You have chosen something that only rich Italians are gonna know how to compensate uh, uh, with you. Uh, rich English people too. Okay, all right. There's a couple there. I <laughs> I, I just you, you were on a foul tip, and you were talking about it. And the entire time I'm like, what in the fuck is he gobbing on about, dude? What the fuck are you talking about? It's basically like <laughs> it's real life Mario Kart. And you're talking about all these goddamn names, and I'm like, no, no one's gonna know what this is. Not one person's like, he's right, he's damn right. No, there's a there's a there's an English man in his mid fifties hearing me talk, and he's like, <laughs> well, that's a very but, good well, point, Noel. It's an astute observation. Uh, he's but, right. But, Mercedes, Mercedes is uh, more of the better cars, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck did you, you you tweeted the other day and you you were talking yeah, I was, about I was making fun of the homoerotic nature of yeah. motorsport. <laughs> but it was but to be fair, I I knew it was a joke, but I I I was it was after a series of of F one tweets that I saw and I just I had the audacity to come and say, What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and all these and girls then, are and all these girls are tweeting underneath it being like, It's F one. He loves F one. <laughs> it's F one Hunter. It's F one. Fuck off. I've actually grown to like it since he's talked about it. I've been kind of like watching it. <laughs> Shut up, you fat ogre! You wouldn't even know. Yeah, exactly. And I and see, all I'm used to is getting men with. Anima, anime profile pics. There's been a new meme going around that I like a lot. It's a uh, it's the Pepe frog, but he kind of looks like a baby. And instead of give, it's gib, G I B, and he does right. this. Have you seen that? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. That gives me a big smile on my face when I see that. Gib. Gib. Um. Gib. <laughs> yeah. So, um, basically, on this show, we're gonna dig into conservatism. Um, mm. motorsport. Yeah. Um, you know what it means to be a man. Yeah. Well, uh, this is it's important to figure out these days. Did you notice my shirt, dude? It's a Las Vegas Harley, Harley Davidson. You said motorsport. I'm already yep. prepared. That's a motorsport right there. Getting Har into Harley, Harley Davidson. Davidson. Harley Davidson Not, uh, as just a brand is a motorsport. So l let me stop. J let me just be clear. Um, this yep. podcast is really just me and Hunter recording conversations we already have. Basically. Bro, do we need to have this? A little bit. Do we? Do do we actually? I think it's helpful. Okay. Well, if you think it's helpful, then that's fine. I just, I feel like people are going to be like, like, why are you telling me what a podcast is? That, that's fair. 
<laughs> but I think it, sometimes it's clear. There is that like lingering 15%. <laughs> what is going on? Yeah. Some person's like screaming at them. Yeah. They're listening in their car. They're like at their desk and they're like, what is this? No, it's going to be some 45 year old British guy. He's like, I thought this was about cars and the red pill. <laughs> I thought that this was going to be more about a series of <laughs> wacky motorized vehicles. You speed around a track in a very mm, hamster like fashion. It's very nice. No, man. They go in spaghetti patterns, okay? That's why I said Italian, dude. I said Italian. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's totally fair. I think the funniest way I've heard it referred to uh, is by uh, this this dude Marrow. He calls it um, <laughs> he calls it Gucci NASCAR. Gucci NASCAR. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah, I could see that. That's a good name for it. Honestly, it 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 definitely does give it a superior superiority that I feel like. Uh, Complex. A lot of Na- a lot of NASCAR people. I, I you I can tell though immediately from NASCAR people that they're intimidated by F one because they I think that they just basically know that this is a much more complicated sport and they're just like I mean it's just kind of fucking lame honestly <laughs> it's lame I'm bored no I'm bored watching it and it's like what did you get like seventeen different angles of the track it's true you yeah. get an angle of Tim Cook bet you bet you didn't expect that. I don't know who the fuck is Tim Cook. The CEO of Apple. Of Apple. Apple. That's right. Yeah. He looks like, uh, he kind of looks, I don't know if this is going to be kind of a cool one. I get to finally kind of get into my film chops. He looks like the uh, the the hand guy. Or no, I'm thinking of Mitch McConnell. They kind of look similar, right? Does Tim Cook look just like Mitch McConnell? <laughs> he does. He just doesn't have as much of a, like a jowl. Well, yeah, Mitch McConnell literally is a fucking... Uh, I'm I'm trying to think of a what's a, what's a candle brand? What's a, what's a good candle brand? Uh, Yankee Candle. That's a popular. There one. you go, Yankee Candle. Should have pulled that one out sooner, but I didn't. He looks like a melting candle. More of the story is Tim yeah. Cook. He looks like that guy in uh, Pan's Labyrinth who has the eyeballs in his hands, and he's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> "Holy shit!" And he grabs that fucking fairy, and he like <laughs> eats it. <clears throat> the thing the last time I saw Tim Cook though was I think he was standing in a random field during the last Apple. You know how Apple does their big. Yeah, showcase thing, and yeah. it's hilarious because it's like they make their Apple campus look like a fucking like a midsummer a set. spaceship. Well, they <laughs> not that yes, but then Tim Cook is like they have all this crazy shit, so they're just like, um, they put all their hot people out at front. I don't know if you mm-hmm. know that. It starts yeah. st- the show starts off, and it's all hot people, and then all of a sudden it's like let's go to you know Sarah whatever. In uh, and see what's new with notes, <laughs> and it's like, yeah. uh oh, and they hop down, and this guy literally like, boop, green screen hops down this hole, and then there's like this girl who emerges from the shadows, and she's like, this is what's new with notes, <laughs> total t- total tone shift, They're like yeah, we keep that bitch and everybody else in this like the boring stuff in the basement, <laughs> don't even want to look at them, and then the end of the show though, it's Tim Cook standing out in a tall grass field outside of the fucking the Osmodeus fucking building that is Apple headquarters. <laughs> and he's just like, I hope you enjoyed what you saw today. Please come back and join us, won't you? <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Please come back and visit any time. He says yeah. that. <laughs> hey, everyone. We want to take a quick break to thank the sponsor of today's episode, BetterHelp. There are a lot of times where I feel my best. Racing, working out, spending time with people I care about, like Hunter. And when you're at your best, you can do great things. But sometimes life gets you bogged down, and you may feel overwhelmed, or like you're not showing up in the way that you want to. Isn't that right, Hunter? It's true, Noel. I mean, working with a therapist can help you get closer to the best version of yourself, okay? Because when you feel empowered, you're more prepared to take on everything that life throws at you. I I have a, a bit of a depressive state of mind a lot of the time. And with, you know, better help, I'm able to really hone in on who exactly will help me out and figure out how can I, you know, stabilize the obesity part of my life, but then also the mental unhinged part of my life as well. That's really good. can join it together. Better help is the Elmer glue that I needed in my life. Yeah. Well, 
Folks, if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp could be an option for you. It's convenient, it's flexible, and affordable, and entirely online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Um, you can go to BetterHelp.com slash stretch today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash stretch. Dude, I just pictured the notes lady. Like being like having like eyes like a newborn gerbil or something like they're like glassed over and blue like she's blind from being in the dark for so long. And they, <laughs> just tell, tell giant, us about <laughs> just a giant fucking humpback coming through. Yeah. Are you there? <laughs> she's like a screw she gave now. I can smell you, but I can't see. She's <laughs> like hobbling around in the dark. She's like you know it, with notes. It's text to speech now, and it's like okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, nah, man, her her fingers are like her vision and she just starts like rubbing Tim Cook's <laughs> like kneecap. She's like, ah, "This is a Tim. It's you." <laughs> oh, I know these kneecaps from anywhere. This is Tim Cook. <laughs> CEO of Apple. Was Tim Cook the guy who also uh basically just spat on the grave of Steve Jobs whenever he was like cuz it wasn't Steve's whole thing and he's like, "We're never going to have a Fun colors of the iPhone, right? Um, you were never going to have a red iPhone. And then as soon as that bitch died, it was like the whole rainbow came out on those iPhone 4S's, I'm pretty sure. I mean, t Tim's gay, so I feel like he just had to, he came in there and he was like, nah, man. <laughs> we're changing it up. He's yeah, like, Steve, you know how he could have been easily cured? Yeah. And he just decided to eat bananas. And yeah. apples, right? And everyone's like, yeah. He's like, I'm not a full-fledged idiot, so yeah. <laughs> we're going to make more colors because it's going to make more money. money is what he, said. <laughs> he said, give me some of that money, as he said at the meeting. <laughs> and then there's a girl in the notes section. She's like hobbling in the back. She's like, yeah, Tim! Yo, yo the first day on the job, he's just like <laughs> yeah. gloating hella hard. He's like, yeah. now this dumbass is dead. Yeah, let's turn it up a notch. Let's make yeah. some fucking money. <laughs> and guess what? I like wearing things other than turtlenecks. Yeah, and fucking thirteen dollar jeans from J C Penney. Let me tell you something. I ate a rotisserie chicken this morning. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't gonna just be fruit because I'm here to make that money. <laughs> God, I wish that's how it actually was. I'm you know that right. they did some kind of crazy Silicon Valley like Viking funeral for Steve, right? That wasn't like publicly broadcasted. Oh yeah, like, every uh, everyone like cut a chunk out of their skin and like poured like a little bit of blood <laughs> into a mixture. I'm not. I'm not even. I think that's legitimate. I think that's an actual thing that probably happened. Okay. Okay. I'm. I'm. Not, I don't think it was blood, but I think it was on that level. You know, I think it was some weird. You know, I. I imagine it was bodily fluid, and I think people kind of just they 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 went with what they had. So I'm talking pee pee poo poo, blood, jizzy whizzies, anything <laughs> in a That's big old in, a, in in like a very in a in a quartz vial, like something that was like nice and it's big and long, mm -hmm. and it like and then they played uh <laughs> they played what that what's YouTube the name album? of the album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful day. Now they played uh, what the fuck song? I don't know the name of it, but it's just like I see I am a sudden fall. Dude. You know what I'm talking? About? Is that Coldplay? Turn around. Yes, it is. But dude, stop, stop going over jokes. So you can show off that beautiful ass voice. Dude, isn't just insane that yeah, it's like going to a full song. <laughs> <laughs> just like no, the song lights just drop. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I look back up at the camera. <laughs> We're here. <laughs> All right, man. Um, I didn't get. Uh, I, I, you know, before we go out, I just have to call out because it was just funny as hell, and because Hunter doesn't believe th this is already why this is going to be great. Hunter doesn't believe in the whole podcaster. Save it for the pod. Hate he does it. not believe in that. I hate it. You know what kind of fucking saying, life is that to live, dude? <laughs> A professional one. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, all right. Well, when you're right, you're right. I guess. <laughs> all right. You're no, twisting I was, my arm. I was just dying laughing because I was legitimately having computer problems, and Hunter says, "I think you went to a fancy grocery store to buy blueberries, and you're lying about your computer being late." And I'm just, I'm just laughing because. 
it's very reasonable that I would do that. But also it made me laugh. Like I need to, I need to change it up. That can't be my stereotype to people that I talk to regularly. Bro, you tech, you te I'm reading, I'm going to read the text. This is an actual text. <laughs> he said, one sec, my audio face be bugging out. That's how he started. I be right? bugging out. <laughs> That's what he said. Literal, literal text. I said, out. and I replied, lying bastard. And then, so he said, be bugging out, first off. I didn't say and then, be bugging no, out. No, no, he, no, no, no. He said, one second, my audio face is be bugging out. <laughs> yeah. so, then, so then my his next text was, no, I'm having a weird permission issue. That is, when I open the software for my user interface, it keeps opening the guest user account, removing the alt accounts to see if that fixes it. <laughs> And I was like, okay, so he's just definitely, he got in his his Porsche or his fucking Mercedes, and he decided to go to some fancy, probably corner of bodega store where the guy's like, it's 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 summer every day, or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And he's just picking the plumpiest blueberries for his breakfast. <laughs> Individually. You also have historic, you have never been on time. No. Ever. Never once. And, when, no. and you just, <laughs> you know what's the frustrating thing, Noel, is you got the power, you set the times. And you don't even show up for your own I know. time frame. I know. I'm a bad person. The funniest shit, dude, when I was, <clears throat> um, so one of my best friends growing up, uh, and then my, my, uh, the guy who like got me in the stand up, mm. they both said in so many words the same thing, but they, <laughs> they both told me several times, they say, oh, at least my, like my comedy mentor, he was like, motherfucker, black people are late. But you are fucking late. You are on your own shit, bro. <laughs> he's like, I thought he's like, I thought I was on CP time. You were on CP time like times twenty. You're <laughs> horrible, bro. <laughs> How many years ago was this? Oh man, this is you know 10, 15 years ago. So you just always had this kind of like, you know what? I'm gonna show up when I show up. Yeah, my boy who I who I grew up with, he was like, You are so fucking blase. <laughs> he was like, Don't ever. He would say, Don't ever. Don't ever tell me a time, basically. <laughs> he, like whenever I'd be like, "Yeah, hey, I'm coming over at 12. He's like, uh, "I'll see you when I see you." I'm yeah, like, no, no bitch. I would get offended. I'd be like, "Bitch, no, I'm coming at 12." He's like, "You're not coming at 12. Stop lying to me. <clears throat> I'm your friend. This is rude." What so, what, yeah. what what makes it what what's so hard about showing up on time? What is it? <clears throat> Honestly, I have uh What if I just got all <laughs> my ADD <laughs> just trying to be a victim yeah I was gonna say if you say anything about your family I'm gonna fucking exit this call right no no now. no 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 literally it's the trauma that I can't mm -mm. no it no I, I just think I have weird like ADD OCD so it's like I should be focused on being on time but I'll be like fucking with something else like no the dishwasher's loaded bad and then I'll burn 20 minutes on that and then I go, oh fuck! I literally just ruined my ability to be on time. So then the I, dishwasher loaded bad. Oh yeah, man, I'm I'm weird. Like the things that make me late are so. Insignificant. How could a dishwasher be loaded wrong? <clears throat> oh, it's it's dude. Are you kidding? No, don't don't really. do this with me. Don't do this with me. I'm I'm just legit. If the, if the items can go in, and if it's a, it, it can be loaded wrong. If it's like a Tetris thing, and I saw, oh, okay, okay. I still I still got shit up on the counter. I need no, to no, put no. it in. Let whatever. me qualify this a little bit. Let me qualify okay. this a little bit. At least in our place, Alina loves to buy these fucking like artisanal, you know, one of three hundred glassware pieces, and then they all have these weird, unique quirks about them, like. Half of our drinking glasses, like the glass is so fucking thin that so many of them have broken in the dishwasher, so you have to load them in a specific place. I've just, I think unintentionally, I've crafted a life for myself where things are delicate. So I think I waste time on that, like in the morning, mm. and it makes me late. Okay. Yeah. So you're it's selfish, not a good excuse. It's what you're saying. So you're selfish. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So, and, and, okay, just make it. So I was just putting that out. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, no, <laughs> I don't know. I've never bought in thin. I just feel like if I knew a glass was thin, I wouldn't buy it. I, also, that, every where the fuck, why the fuck haven't I gotten any thin glasses? Anytime I come to your house, it's fucking IKEA glasses and Diet Coke. <laughs> that's what you time. asked for. Oh, well, that's true. Actually, I asked. You have a very. You also have it, it, your fridge. Your kitchen area is actually a very interesting uh, place to hang out because uh, so much of the time there's Capri Sun in there, and I do like tearing through some of those Capri Suns. I never, I never think about buying Capri Sun at the store 
But when I see it at somebody else's house, boy, oh boy, do I get excited. Yeah. I yeah. mean, we, we, uh, Alina is, that's where she's ace, where we, if we, when we go to the grocery store and I'm buying my fancy berries and I'm chatting with the Italian man <laughs> who's like, it's incredible that we can be in summer every day. Every day. And then <laughs> Alina's like, ooh, people like Capri Suns. I'm like, why are you thinking about other people? Help me pick the berries for me. <laughs> also, how did you possibly find this Capri Sun at this organic bodega? Yeah, oh. Well, Why are they know, selling it there? It's it's because we specially requested it. We called the guy. We're like, hey, we're coming down. We just order a couple, around. would you? Just order a yeah. couple. Could yeah. you, please? Yeah. Dude, okay. I've been binging some shit this week. Mm. Did you binge House of the Dragon? Yeah, a little bit of it. A little bit of it. I, I, wanted, I, saw, I saw it. I saw it. I want to talk about it because it, you know, it's like one of the, like one of the highest viewed Game of Thrones. <clears throat> it, it it got a shitload of numbers, and mm. I've been racking my brain. Do you think that's because people are bored, or do you feel like it's actually good? Like even just watching the first few episodes, did you feel going into it, oh, this is going to be a good show? Like, did it really draw you in? Um. No. Well, I mean, here's the thing is that like I always like to use this uh this analogy, right? Mhm. Mm Game of Thrones home run. Even if you don't like the fucking ending or anything whatever, it's like arguably one of the best written shows, best shows I've personally ever seen. It's probably an, an, that's an opinion. But I, in my opinion, it's just a slam dunk of a show. The ways the characters interweave with each other, the lore, everything about it, even the costumes, the sets, the acting, it's all just great. Yo. Now, if you come off a of smash hit like that, that like literally defined popular culture for a bit, especially with media, and then you come out with a show that's after it, it's gonna, the perception of it is just gonna be not as like, well, it's not this, right? Right. Which leads me to, see, if you get your F1 talk, I get some of my metal talk in. That's fine. That's Slayer fine. released this album called Rain and Blood, mm -hmm. right? And that was an incredibly popular album. Mm -hmm. Very, very popular. So then whenever their next album came out, South of Heaven, which is, I like the album more. Mm -hmm. People were like, ugh, it's just <clears throat> not as good as this. And it can't be appreciated till years later. So I think that people are going to look at this show, and I think it will have the same kind of trajectory as Game of Thrones, if it holds the value that it held the season. Because I don't think people even really remember that Game of Thrones, it took a couple seasons for it to even get fucking up and Good. going. Yeah. Um, but I will say, <clears throat> or I'm going to, here, Liga, I'm not, you know, you go ahead. And... No, no, no. I, I agree. Because <clears throat> I caught myself doing that a little bit. But then I, but then I checked myself and I said, I can't even really remember what happened in the first few seasons. So stop talking shit and try to just watch yeah. it, you mm -hmm. know? And I actually think, they, I okay, this is my fucking broken ass brain and being a pessimist, but I think the older uncle and teenage daughter dynamic, I felt like that was so polarizing in a smart way. I feel like in the writer's room, they're like, this is going to fucking make people mad. And that I felt was, you strip everything else away, <clears throat> that just at its core, I think was so polarizing for people that they... That got a lot of people, I think, to talk about it. Because on Twitter, that's all anyone was saying was, damn, we're just sitting here watching this uncle fuck his niece. Mm. You know, they weren't even thinking about any of that. And I thought, <clears throat> damn, it's pretty smart. Because I'm actually not seeing a lot of conversation about this isn't as good as that. Or like, I miss these characters and this and that. It was so just like, dude, you got to watch just for, simply because this uncle fucks his niece. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, is it polarizing, though? When you know that's the entire thing? We've had a whole series talking about how this is like an incestuous family, right? So if yeah. they weren't fucking, then that's where I'm like, what the fuck is going on? We need to see some incest happen ASAP. Yeah, that's, that's true. Saying. That's true. I, guess I, expected, I expected way more. I, I honestly... I'm not gonna go on a. I'm not gonna make that bold of a claim that I wanted it, but I'm just saying that <laughs> I expected... Kansas City showing right now, I, 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 uh, I'll tell you, I, I thought was more polarizing was that they they don't have as big of a budget for mm -hmm. this show. And they decided to do 
the most elaborate family in Game of Thrones and have the worst CG of people on dragons. Dude. It is so distracting. <laughs> I was like watching it and I'm like, I'm watching a fucking PS3 cutscene with Bro. like live action with live action people on top of it. I'm like, get off the fucking dragons and start having sex with brothers and sisters and fucking dads and uncles. I'm like, put that in there. That's not CG. Hello everyone. We want to take another quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh, pre-proportioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Get HelloFresh and skip that extra trip to the grocery store. Spend more time doing the things you love with delicious, chef-crafted recipes delivered to your doorstep. Mm. HelloFresh now has 40 weekly whoa 40? Oh my god, that's all HelloFresh now has 40 weekly recipes to choose from. So you can say bye bye to your recipe rut and treat yourself and your family to exciting new flavors every week. You can customize select meals by swapping proteins or sides, or even add protein to a veggie dish. You can even upgrade for organic chicken or organic ground beef. Oh. HelloFresh's pre-proportioned ingredients and easy-to-follow recipe cards mean you can get a delicious home-cooked dinner on the table with all that time-consuming meal planning or prepping. Ingredients travel from one farm to your home in less than seven days. So you know they're fresh. All right, mm. Noel? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know it. Now, I, I know love using HelloFresh. The recipes are easy to follow and mm -hmm. super delicious. Mm -hmm. It's so great to have a home-cooked meal without all the hassle of planning and shopping. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And if you want to take advantage of that, folks, you can go to HelloFresh.com slash stretch65. And use code STRETCH65 for 65% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash STRETCH65 and use code STRETCH65 for 65% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Okay, okay. Everything. I'm glad you're saying this. Wait, let me qualify the polarizing thing. I think it's totally reasonable to say, is it actually polarizing? Maybe not. Maybe it's polarizing in the sense that I think in the early Game of Thrones, like... There was a lot of brutal stuff, and you hear about incest, but maybe, I guess I say it's polarizing because, like, specifically the episode where, and maybe I'm projecting myself into people, but where we actually saw this uncle, like, fucking around with his niece, that made me feel like, ugh. Like, yeah, like in the, what is it, the, the like, the fuck house? What yeah, is, the what fuck is house. The, what, what, what is that called? What, why can't I think of it? It's a, a, uh, um, it's not a, it's not a brothel. It's, well, it's like a brothel, right? Isn't that a brothel? I thought brothel is kind of like it's like a know, bathhouse kind of thing. Yeah, and then there's a big house, fuck yeah. room. Whatever, it's a fuck palace. <laughs> we'll just say that he's down there, and the whole thing is, and it was funny. And I wish they would have harked on him more. Is him? If I wish because he had a limp dick, he couldn't get his dick hard to have sex with his niece, right? Yeah, yeah. So I wish I would have seen. You could have sat there and you could have seen him like tugging away at his pud a little bit. <laughs> and he's like, God. And she's like, What's wrong? You know, looking back at him. What's going on, Uncle? And he's like, Don't look at me. Stop. Right. Then I would have been like, whoa. But he's just kind of like, Ugh. and he like runs away and he has Ran that, away. Fucking, that, that pumpkin face where his eyes are like touching the back of his skull. Yeah. It's, it's so deep. His eyes yeah. are so deep. He has a he's, crazy like, I don't, he's like, my car can't get hard. Bro, they had um they had the baby eraser elixir. How did they how do they not have the Cialis? You know? That's, I mean, I yeah, I don't know. I mean, come on, they gotta have something. Especially he's, he's like part magic or some shit. Like that family, yeah. <laughs> part magic. I don't know. He's just like, I feel like he can cast some kind of spell to make his dick hard. <laughs> I will say the if it, the whole the incest thing with this going into it, it kind of ruins it because with Game of Thrones, the first time I was watching that, I had no idea. So that first episode when you see Jamie Lannister really fucking going to town on the top of the tower, yeah, that, so with Cersei, yeah, you're like, what the fuck. You know, like, holy shit, and that's a big surprising thing. Now, see, now uh, it's ruined because I feel like, like I said, I'm just sitting here and I'm just, I, I, I feel like I'm I'm needing it. Like, I'm like, where's the checkbox? Yeah. Who's fucking who? That's I true. expect it because yeah, in this show, did, yeah. not, uh, not as many sex scenes. And I think it's because of the incest. I think if they're like, we can't have as many sex scenes yeah. because yeah. <laughs> it's definitely going to be family members having sex with each other. So you can't have like the casual thing where the guy's like coming in, he's like fucking this girl from behind. And he's like, we have to talk about the Citadel. And he's like, all right, fine. He's like, sister, go wash up. Like, you know, like you can't. All right, mom, I'll see you at dinner. You know what? You know what fucked it up? 
was they showed okay first of all you're so right my short term my fucking pop culture short term memory how do i forget jamie lannister boning the shit out of his sister episode <laughs> one yeah one. yeah 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 boom but so i think okay so here's what they did people okay so maybe people came into it with that subtle like incest is gonna happen i need to see it right yeah and then they did one with like a wild age disparity and then i think that made people kind of go "Ooh, wait a second you know it doesn't feel it like is. everyone's in, you know and then it and is. then the next episode they showed the king standing next to that fucking eight-year-old yeah so i guess we're getting married <laughs> yeah and everyone's like hey she's like, she's like it's the best for the kingdom and he's like mm. he's like <laughs> nah. you're not my daughter so this feels wrong <laughs> <laughs> you're not my daughter's 12 year old best friends this doesn't feel right yeah yeah but okay wait so to the point of bad cg mm. i was gonna say there were moments or there are many moments in the show that feel like game of thrones where it's okay this is this is you know it's got the same quality <clears throat> it feels that way right but and then when they go to the 3d it feels like a cw show or like the early x-men <laughs> it's just yeah yeah it, it... <laughs> It is. It, it's distracting because of like, I don't know. Like, also, it's distracting because at the same time, I was I was watching uh, Rings of Power, the Lord mm. of the Rings one, mm. and they put like a billion dollars into that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, in that one, it does look CG, but like, it's still a pretty show. Um, I think visually, Rings of Power is a stronger show. I mean, it's like very Marvel, kind of like really bright and stuff. So. And Game of Thrones is very moody, but it felt like even the 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 costumes in Game of Thrones were it just wasn't as fun or like I don't know. The the later the show went on, the more that I was like really I started actually getting invested into this the season. Yeah. Um versus Rings of Power, I was like basically checked out by episode four. I yeah. Was like, I'm done. You know, like <clears throat> so it, it, I think the writing is definitely better. I think like it's a stronger show. And I think like it has room to be something cool, but my uh, my wife brought up something interesting too with this is uh, she was like the problem with a prequel show like this is that like you kind of you kind of are anticipating the outcome at every time since it's like yeah. we know what happened to the Targaryen incest family so it's yep. just kind of you're kind of just like wondering how that's going to play out versus Game of Thrones it was always very like what the fuck is actually going to happen who uh -huh. who is going to be the ruler at the end yeah so I don't know if that's going to hurt or not but you know. It is what it is. Everything fucking sucks on television right now, so who cares? Yeah. I um I kind of yeah, I agree. It was pretty laboring to get back into it. You know, after <laughs> after the whole like uncle and then like potentially the king marrying the kid, I was sort of jaded like ah it's gonna make people fuck kids in this show. Man, I'm out of here. Like, yeah, just, I don't even care what's next. This is weird yeah. I'm glad it. they're classy enough to not be like, well, I mean, it would have happened during the time. Yeah. It's like <laughs> I don't need to see it. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> uh, There's some fucker on Megan's <laughs> Law in the room. Like, whoa. There was a bunch of like very punchy shows coming out. I mean, it is like the time of year where studios are trying to release their their exciting stuff to compete against each other but like going from like Dahmer yeah. to Rings of Power to fucking House of the Dragon my mind is just like fucked like yeah. my I like my I feel weird sexually I feel weird <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel weird about my moral compass. I don't know what I'm what I'm learning, what I'm dropping. I have no idea. I just feel I feel conflicted. I, I don't <laughs> think it's good for people to watch a show. You know, I, I imagine like with Dahmer, like gay people watching that show and easily projecting themselves into characters where they can relate. Like, oh yeah, you know, I know that feeling to like want to be into another man. And then Watching that person just get cut up in fucking pieces, I don't, I don't think that's it is, good for. I don't think it's good for anybody. I, I don't think that there is any good from idolizing a murderer, even though as fascinating as it is, and as like tantalizing as it is to know why something happened, I feel like there's been so much fucking media about Dahmer where it's just like, did did we actually need this kind of? uh the show to exist 
And as I was watching it, it's like, you know, the show is like done well. I think it's captivating mm -hmm. or whatever. But like at the end of it, I guess I was just pissed because I was just like, God, I've heard this fucking story a billion times. And now they got Evan. What's his Is it Evan Peters? Uh, Let me see. Let me look it up. I'm just going to say Evan Peters for now. And like girls are getting hard over his cosplay for Jeffrey Dahmer. And I'm like, I feel like the, the point is being missed. And it's oh, just 100%. Uh, it's just weird. It, but it's it, but then at the same time, then you have like Disney with their Lord of the Rings, and then people are reading about like Lord of the Rings lore, mm -hmm. and then you got House of the Dragon, where the goddamn show is just about as dark as like if someone took a flip phone camera and filmed something filmed in the, the middle of the night. Thing. Yep. Yeah, I know people were complaining too. They're like, you couldn't even see the fuck scene with the uncle and the. the people uh, said that. Get yeah, out yeah. of here with dude, the uncle you said and the that, dude. dude. Seek God. <laughs> dude, I'm not I even religious, see, but seek God. People, people be twirling them glasses of wine, dude. Especially yeah. women, dude. I see a lot of women hankering for some just vile shit. <laughs> and I know they're just sitting there with that glass, just spinning. A little rosé, you know what I'm talking about? A little Pinot Grigio. So they're just like, they're like, I can't even see it. <laughs> like looking at the screen like that. That's such a funny way to tell on yourself. Everyone's like, "Yeah, what do you think about the show?" Yeah, no, it's all right. Yeah, you can't even see it when the uncle. Yeah, I think the show's really dark. Have you noticed that? They're like, "Oh, I guess I didn't know." Yeah, it's just a scene with the 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 sex scene. You couldn't see it. I just I just thought that was weird. It's like, oh well, I didn't really think about it. Yeah, it took me out of the show. I'm like looking around and shit. What do you mean? We mean took you out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. What What did you mean? Take you out? No, I just mean it's like a. Just if you're gonna sh if you're gonna film something, I want to see it. You know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna film something, I want to see it. If you're gonna film something, I want to take a gander. Right? Let me take a peek at that. Well, yo, speaking of like real violence, how about mm. that girl hacking her head open? Oh yeah, I just I li literally <laughs> I literally saw that on Twitter. Like uh, the like maybe thirty seconds before I sent it to you, I thought that was so funny. Insane clown posse fans, man. Chop, Turned up. chop, 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 or whatever. <laughs> just gashes her head open. <laughs> the look of like concern and confusion of she's just like, why am I in pain all of yeah, a sudden? Yeah. Why, why? Why am I in pain? Oh shit! I can't see. There's blood in my eye. Oh yeah! I just fucking stabbed my forehead. You know that feeling too when you cut yourself open and. You're kind of like, oh, it's it's fine, and then you look at the cut, and then you get that, whoa, like well, you yeah, ever had that? You're like, oh shit, yeah. Well, well, like, <laughs> not 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 to the extent of having a cleaver and slashing my head open, but yeah, like you know, a pocket knife closing on my finger, and then it like you know, a yeah, way yeah. more blood is coming out than I expected. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. Wait, hold up. Let's just because we can't, we literally can't show the clip, but um, if you don't know what we're talking about, basically, it's just like insane clown posse fan, this young woman. She pulls out a fat kitchen knife and she's kind of mimicking, you know, like a stabbing motion to some music. You could tell she feels really empowered by the whole uh, scenario. And then she very um, into it unintentionally takes like a gash right out next to her eyebrow. And then there's like a three seconds where she's looking into the camera, like kind of like holding her skin open. As Oof. Blood is just. <laughs> I just watched it again. The thing too is she is stabbing so hard. She has a knife. Yeah. The whole, you're going to the beat of like bop, 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 bop. But her her wrist curves on the last one, and that f and that knife hits that her technique. forehead like right there. That Brutal. technique. <laughs> that is a good one, dude. What do you ever peruse? Are you a big cringe guy? I found I found that on a cringe site uh -oh. or like on a cringe page. Yeah, honestly, I, I do try. I don't go anywhere that's like cringe at this, but I definitely seek it out. I like cringe. There's a lot of pages. I don't really follow them, but I do. I My whole algorithm, everything about my algorithm is just cringe. Mm. So like all sorts of just terrible, terrible videos on the Internet. I just I, I eat it up, dude. I don't know why I'm addicted. Yeah, that just that just test your like humanity. No, no, no! Not even testing. It's it's satiating the fucking hunger I have to see <laughs> terrible like content that is like it's it's so peculiar that it's like just from people who are just uploading things and then like people like myself yeah. cultivate it and we yeah. feed on it. 
a lot of times I don't even smile. I have show no emotion when I watch these videos. Yeah, it could be a good. video of somebody like slobbering. <laughs> that's good. Oh, thank God, thank God, dude. Um, it's like somebody just slobbering or something like that, or just whatever. It's like supposed to not just cold. Like I just don't even show emotion. Yeah. But what do you, what do you think? Okay, what would you say actually makes you cringe? Uh, something that actually makes you go. Ooh. Mm. I went through this. I went through this period where people watching people's hangnails get removed. That was like pretty cringy. That, that was like that was something that was hard to watch. Uh, I don't know why. That was just on my for you page for a lot, like on TikTok and even like Instagram Reels. It was just like doctors going in with scalpels and like having mm. to cut the nail off and like take it out. That was pretty brutal. Um, I think a lot of stuff too of like. Uh, the prom videos, prom videos get me really bad. Oh, so like, so kids asking each other proposal? to go to prom. Yeah. That, failed that, or just even following through? Either or. Mm. Either or. Usually mm. if it's a follow through, the people are kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's like this thing and they're always in like a public place or something. But I think obviously the ones that have uh, where it's a fail, that one is, it's always just a tough watch. That's a, yeah. I'm just always like, God damn. That's just yeah. brutal. Especially like, you know, yeah. I would say some of that physical stuff, like hangnail stuff, weirdly that can be like an oddly satisfying thing for me. Like I can watch earwax cleaning videos, no problem. Sure. Uh, yeah. But I I don't know what it is about, yeah, public displays of affection and um, yeah, like a, la a lack of self-awareness in any context, I think that makes me cringe way harder than like blood or violence. It makes me feel so like horrible. I don't know why that is. Yeah, anything that's disrupting public, like there was that thing there for a while. There's that there's that clip that went around that was like the guy um, who goes into the McDonald's and he like, gets up on the counter and he says, like, I'm Pickle Rick and, like, Rees. And he, like, jumps off the counter and, like, flops on his back and he's, like, spinning around in circles on the ground. It was just one of those things where I just, like, it made me feel so uncomfortable that I would just, it, it, it fucked me up. But yeah. I think anything that just, like, is involving the public and, like, being a nuisance for comedy, that yeah. makes me cringe so hard. I'm not even, like, I'm not even wince like wincing because like to be dramatic it genuinely just makes me feel like oh, like fucking stop that this is always my face when i when i watch those <laughs> you know what i mean i'm having a normal day and all of a sudden it's just i'm pickle rick yeah re and you're like Ugh. about tap dude yeah that's a you know it's such a modern thing to go out in public and fuck around for the camera. Yeah. yeah. There was, when, um, um, uh, after our wedding, uh, we had like some days where we kind of went into the main city and then, uh, Elena and I checked out this like museum slash palace, like a bunch of art and shit. Mm. And I just couldn't stop trying to like conceptualize the, the stark difference in like individualism. Like back then, those people were just like, you know, getting gonorrhea from, or like dying from diarrhea, fearing God every day. Like there was no sense of self. It's like, I'm gonna wake up, I'm gonna make this bread. I hope God does not fucking kill my whole family. And like, I hope the, I hope the queen is happy. And then now literally everyone's like, I want to be famous. Selfish. Yeah. Yeah. Back then it would have been, you know, it would be sweet. You'd be totally satisfied being a baker, being a yeah. baker. And then you you're just like, dude, I'm doing things right. It's going to be fucking sweet, yep. whatever. You probably don't want all that responsibility. The less responsibility, the better. Yeah. And then it's just like, you know, here we go. Uh, let's go to heaven. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Must have been must have been nice, dude. <laughs> must have been nice. You know, I tell myself that sometimes, and I have to catch myself because I'm also just like, it, w it probably was a miserable, miserable time to no, be alive. No, it was terrible. It was hot. It must have, it must have been just <laughs> absolutely... If you look, I've been to a museum, I've been to like art museums and stuff and th things that show like <clears throat> practical things from that time, like uh, clothing and stuff. And it yeah. all just looks so itchy and just, yeah. it just looks so, I just, I'm like, I can't imagine that. Like I would be the guy just in the potato sack, <laughs> put, put me in a fucking potato sack versus this tight, 
tight clothing that just it, it looks easily flammable. Bro, <laughs> bro, <laughs> the sack with like the drawstring belt. Yeah, you know, just like that they show, like the the, the like the friar tuck type outfit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I want my belly to go down too, so I I put the the belt around halfway around my around my my belly, so it's not underneath my stomach; it's over it like that. Yeah. So then I look like one of those like really obese men or women at Walmart, where it's like they have the belly, but then they also have like the extreme fupa, so it looks yeah. like a giant orb walking yeah. around. Yeah. I want that. <laughs> I want that. I need that. In medieval times, though, I can't. Uh, <laughs> I can't be having that today. I got only in medieval times can I do that. I just want to say, dude, you're looking huge. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, you're looking. You're looking, Jack, dude. Is the home gym working out for you? Um, it is. I'm. I'm back on it a little bit. You know, I'm. I'm getting as big as I can get. Realistically, the 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 potential of of size is probably not much bigger than this you know without steroids so you know you uh you were saying that you wanted to get absolutely jack though yeah just like yeah like another five or eight pounds and then i'd be yeah but when you say super jacked i'm thinking like are you trying to be like super cut and you're trying to be like defined pecs no 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 no. bigger arms and all that sorry that's that's kind of a like i use that term because that would ru- that would ruin your comedy career no 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 i don't i don't want to be like that genuinely i don't i just I really just want to be able to do like 30 to 40 pull-ups, no problem. I can, yeah, I can sympathize with that. Yeah, just like, I just who, want- Who wouldn't, who wouldn't want to be able to do 30 to 40, you know? Yeah. I just want yeah. functional strength. I don't care to be like massive, you know? I don't, I don't want to be thinking about food all the time. Yeah. I got I to gotta think about other things. Yeah, no. So you don't have to worry. I'm, uh, and it, you know- doesn't it doesn't matter if I get ripped because I'm I, I don't think I can I don't physically think it's possible for me to like get big without steroids so it's just you know it's if a you, hobby it, I mean like I guess I'm gonna put the ball in your court a bit is there ever a reality where you would do steroids I would want to do it one time because I think it'd be funny but you wouldn't do it you know what's funnier though is that if you do it for six months. That's what I mean. It's like just a one-time cycle. Oh, so you're I, saying a full cycle? I thought you just meant like, oh, I injected myself once with steroids. That's no, 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 no. Do like a full cycle one time. I think it'd be super funny. I just, I've heard so, I've heard Tren gives you insane dreams. There's this dude I know who started taking it on Twitter, and he started a thread documenting all his dreams. Hmm. I was telling you a little bit about this. I'm like, damn, that's fucking like, that's actually funny. To like want to get buff, and then you just end up taking the most extended psychedelic possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, every night you're having like a spiritual awakening, <laughs> and then you're also angry as hell when you, you know, does like that, you're just. Did, did that fuck up his sleep at all? Like, did he? Did, did, does he? Is he actually getting like good REM sleep, or is he just like fucking hallucinating and thinking that he's like dreaming? That's a good question. I should ask him. I would imagine it's probably like a mixture of both. Maybe some nights it's like intense REM, and then other nights it's got to be like waking up in a panic, like, damn, this is not good. <laughs> yeah, cold sweats for sure. Dude, you should just start start like uh, start like next week. Sure. <laughs> yeah. start, 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 start next week. Just get like, I, I just, I want to see you do this. I want to be, yeah. I just, I, I just... I just think it'd be really funny. And the thing too is like, I'm only going to see you through this webcam, right? Yeah. So you can, I want you to put over blankets, a comforter while you're, while you're, uh, while we're chatting. And then I want to have a big reveal where I go out there and you're just fucking <laughs> just <laughs> massive, <laughs> just giant pull. <laughs> I, Cause whenever I see you and we shake hands, uh, you kind of pull me into you naturally. Every time. Yeah. I let you know where we're at. Yeah. But I if take I take my I take my big fucking meaty paw and I pull you in close and I and I fucking I smell that expensive ass cologne on you. And I'm like, hey, I'm like, how you doing? I give you the lawnmower. How you doing? I yeah. give you one of those. Yeah. Come on. Like that. I give you one of those. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what do you always do? You do <laughs> Yeah. I make that noise. <laughs> Just like that every time. Hi. <laughs> now imagine your hey. fear. Imagine your yeah. fear after six months. You see me. And I pull you in. I mog you. Not only there, fucking, brother. Vroom. Fucking pull me in. You dislocate my fucking shoulder. 
throw me over your shoulder like a fucking like a sack of potatoes. And I'm like, Noel, no. And you fucking and throw me. Yeah. And I log into your YouTube channel and I film a video and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, this is a bodybuilding channel now. <laughs> yeah. We were like, what? My dead body is just in the fucking background. Vultures <laughs> pecking away at it. I would say a bad joke. <laughs> Today we're starting with deadlifts and I'm just grabbing your carcass. And just, <laughs> oh. I'd probably shit my pants. You know, that's the thing is like, that's a big, maybe knowledgeable for a while that when you die, a lot of people yeah. shit themselves. I have a feeling that no matter what, I could not eat for days, weeks, right? I'm one of those yeah. people who's dying and they're just like, he just isn't eating. It's a sign he's dying. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. as soon as I'm done, <laughs> it's going to jet out of me, watery, a fucking wet mess. They're going to call it an afterbirth. <laughs> the doctor's like, oh, do you do an afterbirth? That's what, probably what they do for men who have intense diarrhea. Dude. It's going to be fucking... <laughs> It's gonna go across the fucking bed, cascade down. It's gonna be intense. Damn, I'm just thinking Kubrick. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, through the, the elevator, <laughs> pouring through. If you had to die in your in your home, now this is this is gonna be an odd question because it's gonna seem obvious, but I want you to actually think about it. No, no, it's fine. If you were gonna die, and you knew that you're gonna die, would you rather die at a hospital or die in your in in your home? I, I home because a hospital environment is so sterile. I feel like you know you're dying. Versus, well, like, I feel like going into this, you know you're dying. Yeah, yeah. You you, you know you are going to die. Yeah, but at okay. home, it's sort of like I'm dying, but it, it's going to come get me. It's going to come get me, and at least I'm here. You know, I would prefer the hospital because because I don't think I could stand the weight of me. This is my biggest thing. A couple things. One, uh, to die in a house, who would, if your family would want to live there when you're gone, right? Hey. They'd be like, yeah, he died right here. It'd be so uncomfortable. Two, you never see a movie where uh, a hospital is haunted versus you see a house. I don't want to be trapped in my home forever. Okay? So that's another thing. And I think that also the idea that I feel like I would be able to do my explosive shit without feeling bad. I would hate to be on my dying bed. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm sorry. And it's like, boosh, whatever. And I'm looking at my wife who's just like this. <laughs> like, look really? At me. Look at me. Yeah, really? exactly. Like, because she probably thinks I'm already gone. I'm like, I'm like laying in the bed like this. And then. And I'm still kind of there. And she's just like, Oh God! Like God damn Jesus Christ! See, that yeah, like my fucking daughter, whose name's like Stephen. Yeah, she's like Stephen, go get the mop. <laughs> and I hear their whole argument. I'm dead in this room, and I just hear like how no one cares, and I'm dead. Why? Your father just died, and he shit all over the bed. It's on the floor. <sighs> and they hear stomping around and stuff like that, and I'm still just like. I just picture for some reason your your daughter Steven getting on one of those like corporate Zambonis that's like to like you know or like in a retail store like a big box retail store that they used to like yeah. clean the floors <laughs> she just comes in that should move in really slow and she's just arguing with your mom she's like yeah. cleaning it out H hitting the door frame as it comes yep. in <laughs> <laughs> squeezes in <laughs> what did I tell you I said to the mob not the Zamboni <laughs> Wait, dude, I have to say two things. One, I'm selfish. See, you're a selfless person. You think about other people. If it's my death, it's my time. I'm dying in the bed I paid for, in the house I paid for. And if you want my fucking house and I'm gone, that's fine. But just know, I'm dead. What brand of bed do you have? Mm. You're going to hate this. It's Why? everything you hate. It's everything you hate. Okay. I stayed at the Four Seasons a couple times, and I'm like, what is this fucking mattress? <laughs> yep. Hey, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. You're going to love this, though. You're going to love this, though. <laughs> it's a piece of shit. It is such a scam. It's not good. Yeah, so why are you still sleeping on it, then? Um, I'm going through Why don't you get out of there? I'm going through this weird warranty thing right now. I'm like, yo, I paid a lot of money. The bed should not fuck up like this within, like, one year of buying Can it. Can you crazy. publicly tell me? 
Yeah. Right now, how much you paid for that bed? Yeah, it was like three grand. That's not bad for a bed. Yeah. Beds are fucking expensive. Beds are so expensive. For it's, no- a, it's a racket. It's all a racket. That might be less than what I paid for my bed. I, bu- I bought an avocado bed. Oh. Because my, my wife does this. My wife does this. <clears throat> she does this. The animals. Uh, recyclable. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and I do, and I do. Hey, whatever gets you to fucking stop, you know, doing. Once you start doing this, <laughs> this really is oh, a red- the Earth dying. Ooh. This really is a red pill podcast now, bro. Yeah, actually, it's a very lovely bed. The brand's <laughs> avocado. It's great, but it's so fucking expensive. It really is very expensive. I probably pay. I probably pay like three grand for my bed too. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, I feel scammed because. The bed does not feel as good as the hotel bed, and this shit is... It, <laughs> you motherfuckers lie. <laughs> dude. <laughs> dude. It's already sinking. Like, if if I just, like, put a little bit of pressure on my kneecap, it literally goes from, like, the full <laughs> mattress to, like, a quarter of what it's supposed to be. It's mind-blowing. So, yeah, it's, it's like... Uh, what the fuck is that? Is it that scene in Adam's family? Is that what it is? Where he like lays in his bed and like sinks. He like sinks all the bro, way into the floor. Bro, it's legitimately like that. Aline and I have to sleep in a very specific way so we can actually be both held up by it. It's it's horrible. But wait, wait, wait. I have to go back to the defecating thing real quick. Okay. So I was taking a health class in high school, and this teacher who was already just like a dickhead, like stupid teacher. He was a funny guy, but he was a total dipshit. Um. He starts talking about defecating when you die. Yeah. And he mentions that. And he said something about like, I feel I feel like a student kind of just chirped and said, does that mean you just shit everywhere? And he starts laughing. And then he's like, he does like one of those like, yes, but hey, you can't. And then the classroom starts laughing. And then I'm dying laughing. And then he... For then, the rest of the class was getting mad at us for laughing at the idea of a dead man shitting and pissing himself everywhere. And I was like, I've, I've never forgot that moment because I'm like, fuck you, man. How are you just going to tell a bunch of 14-year-olds, yo, this guy poo-poo pee-pee all over himself when he die, and then you're going to be mad at us for laughing? I've well, never yeah. forgotten I, 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 that. I never understand that. It's like there's going to be snickering. Yeah. You know, people will snicker. That's okay. I've, the... uh. It's funny as you bring up the health class. I had a health, there's a health teacher who was like a volleyball coach. They were talking about safe sex and stuff in yeah. the health class. Yeah. And once again, there was snickering, you know, whatever. And she was like, I know sex is crazy, but some people do like it in their rectum. Like that. And people were like, it was like cold. Like, <laughs> everyone's like, yeah, Yo, you made it. And she's weird. like, and guess what? And she's like, and guess what? Sometimes men like to be with other men and they like to please each other's rectum. Cold, another wall hits. And guess what? She says that. Guess what? Some women like to please other women with their fingers and their hands and other devices known as strap ons, dildo. Goes in this whole thing, and we're all just like, you know, like crazy. And she's like, and for another thing, you know what? Basically, she like got into this whole, like, she ranted and raved. Right. But it was very odd because it was just like some men like to do this, 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 this. And it was like, yeah, that uh, that makes sense. But then she's just like, and you please a man through his rectum by head, like way too detailed, <laughs> way, way too detailed. She's like with your prostate. And if you can simultaneously please the prostate, a man will ejaculate. Oh, layman's shit. turns come. Literally that. And we were like, what? is actually happening right now because then like my friend like like we raised she's like any questions hands raised a lot look like a cornfield in there (laughs) i mean like crazy you tyler yeah so why did you explain what gay sex was she's just like (laughs) and everyone was just like (laughs) again and she was like office Guy goes to the office. He's like, yeah, she's in there talking about how you stimulate prostates, how 
<laughs> Ow. Women like to please each other with their fingers and hands. And the principal immediately walks up and he's just like, uh, Rebecca, can I talk to you right for a second? Gone. Fired. Gone. Yeah. Damn. Died on the sword. Died. Well, you know, you thought about that. And people were like, oh, that's kind of fucked up. And then it turns out that she was like, you know, doing a little finger tickle to with yeah. girls in the locker yeah, room. Diddler and stuff. stuff. So, so, you know. Yeah, the diddler. Mm-hmm. I was, uh, you know, what's funny is before you even called out like what she was, I was just gonna say health teacher and coach, always, always a bad combo. Mm-hmm. Always, God, hey, God forbid you got somebody in there who was like, this is just what I educate people on. It's like, no, we either have to have a volleyball coach or a wrestling coach, and there is no, yeah. no in betweens. Yeah. It's an extreme. No, an we, aggressive, short, stocky man walking around <laughs> in like tight pants. You're gonna come, and you're gonna come hard. You might get pregnant and take this con, you know, take this fucking ball of condoms. Not that one, Jeremy. That one's for big dicks. You got a little dick. He gives him a little fucking condom. This one. You want the blue level one? And then there's the. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, let me see you put it on. Yeah, put that on. Let me show you do it right. Let me show you how we do it. He pulls out his tiny little dick. And he's yeah, like, you can put on this little, my little dick right here. And put on my, take off my singlet. He takes off his shirt. He has a singlet on. <laughs> Get on my fucking singlet on. Takes it on. He's like sitting there, and he's just like, it's gonna be normal if the condom doesn't roll all the way down to the base of the cock. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No one ever has to roll it all the way down. So well, like that just fundamentally cannot be true. Oh, the whole no. class is just. Yeah. <laughs> He's looking around. He knows that he's the smallest dick in the room. He's like, stop looking at me. <laughs> like looking around. You stop. Uh, <laughs> cries and fucking runs out the room. Uh, God damn. Well, they used, to, they used to be a joke that my friend told me. He would always say, uh, you ever see the serial numbers at the end of the condom? And I'd say, no. He's like, you know, not rolling it down far enough. Oh, right. motherfucker, dude. That's a good one. Yeah, he got me every time with it. That is hilarious, dude. I I don't know why I'm saying every time it was one time. It's not like he was like, you ever see it? And I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> Can I keep doing it? No, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. I'm very innocent. <laughs> hey, Hunter, have you seen them? Did you see them last night? I know on Monday night you said you didn't see them, but how about, you know, it's Tuesday now. <laughs> I still have it. <laughs> oh, okay. Actually, very funny to just keep that going multiple days in a row, just shitting on you. Mm-hmm. It's true. Um, but yo, we um, <laughs> oh, he's just going crazy. Uh, speaking of shitting everywhere and and ending life, um, we we've now crossed crossed the hour mark, and I uh, after eating all that oatmeal, I got to do do my brains out. I imagine so. I I knew it was coming at some point. I knew you're gonna yeah. have to check in, stink up that beautiful bathroom that you got in there. Hey, let me say this. My my stomach has built some resolve in in recent weeks. You know, I can go a couple hours. I can like get a good amount of oatmeal in there, and I'm like, I'm I'm okay. But um, this shit is hitting. All right, well, hit that shit then. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in to this episode of uh, Stretch and Fade. We'll see you very very soon. <laughs>